Hey guys, it's Lucas, and in this video, I'm going to be going over how you can set up your Shopify tasks on AIO Bob. But before I get into how you can create the tasks, always make sure when setting up your tasks, you want to have your billing profile set up as well as your proxy list set up. You also want to make sure that you harvest cookies for the sites that require you to harvest cookies. Uh, but it is worth noting that Shopify sites do not require you to harvest cookies. So you wouldn't have to worry about this step for the Shopify tasks. And also make sure that you have your settings configured. Now, once you're done with all of that, you can go ahead to the tasks tab and click on add new. And now you can click on the Shopify logo and you will first realize that you know, you do have a lot of different sites to pick from. And if you're ever confused as to, you know, what sites are releasing what items, uh, don't worry about it. We usually have and mention all the different sites that are releasing a particular item and we'll mention all of them in our Discord guides. And for every site that is releasing, we usually specify, you know, kind of like the different uh, setups that you have, you should have for all the different sites. Uh, and now you can go ahead, pick a site. I'm going to go and for the sake of this example, pick undefeated. It is one of those more common sites that release some of the more hyped items. And something to note about undefeated that is a bit different than most of other Shopify sites is undefeated requires you to have, uh, you know, login details before you actually check out an item. And what I mean by that is like, you know, you should sign into uh, an account on the site before you actually check out something and in this case i have already set up an account and the way you can do that for shopify tasks is you could go to the settings you can go to site accounts and over here as you can see i already set up uh a, you know account information for undefeated but you could just go ahead click on add new select the site that you want and then Click, just add an email and password and usually what you do before you actually do that step is you go on the site and you actually create an account yourself or uh, you could even uh, you know there are certain tools out there that you could use that auto create these uh, accounts for you but once you're done with that you can go back to the Shopify task go to undefeated and select an account Right? And usually in the Discord guide, we will mention if a certain site requires you to have an account. And that's usually with a disclaimer that says that for this site, there's a accounts required. Now, once you're done with that, uh, you can go to proxy list and I'm going to pick my Shopify proxies list. And then uh, you're going to reach this step over here, which is the early link, but also the keyword and the variant. Now, usually when setting up your Shopify tasks, you have these three options. The option that you will be using most often is the keyword option. So to demonstrate the keyword, I'm going to go ahead to the undefe undefeated site and I'm going to search for a product that is already in stock and just to show you how I would set up my keywords. Uh, so if I went to undefeated and I went ahead and picked this product. So as you can see here, the product is the ACG Mach 3.0 leather. I'm going to go ahead and take the keywords from here. And for keyword formatting with AI OBA, that's something important to know. You're gonna wanna use an ampersand sign when you wanna separate the keywords. Now, another note as well to take into account is the bot does not accept the any period in the keyword. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna use an ampersand sign as well instead of the and. You could also you know, you're not obliged to add all this entire keyword set if you didn't want to. You know, sometimes key, uh, keywords on the site will not be the full name of the product. Sometimes, you know, sites will try to mess around with the keywords and they'll try to use, you know, a partial name of the product. So sometimes, you know, you don't really have to be as detailed. So um, I could always like remove the 3.0 and just have this. Of course, in order for you to particularly pick this set of uh, keywords, you want to make sure that there is no other product on the entire site that actually shares uh, this exact uh, set of keywords, you know, um, which is why I always highly suggest 
you know, if you aren't sure about what keywords to use in particular, to always refer to the Discord guides. Usually we do our research beforehand and we make sure that the keywords that we provide you are keywords that are unique to that product and no other product would actually uh, share the same keywords, which would end up meaning that, you know, whenever you use this keyword and a product comes onto the site, you would only pick the right item and not like, you know, a wrong item, which you know, has happened before to many users who have used, uh, you know, uh, keywords that are not too specific. But, uh, you know, other than the keywords, you also do have the early link. Now, Undefeated doesn't usually have an early link, but since we are taking a product that is already in stock, you can go ahead and copy that and paste the early link here. Uh, no need to include the variant. Uh, for the early link, this should be more than enough. And just to kind of demonstrate that it is more than enough, if you were to just kind of paste that here and just click on enter, it would lead you to the exact same product. So this is just kind of like how simple it is with keyword, uh, with early links, sorry. Uh, the thing is, most of the times, you know, there won't be early links for a lot of the sites that we provide. However, you know, sometimes when we do have early links, we will provide them to you in the Discord. Finally, we have uh, the variants. And so the variant is pretty much a code that is used on the site that is similar to the PID that we've explained in Footsite's video, where it pretty much is a code, it's, it's kind of like a set of numbers that helps the site kind of like identify different products uh, on the site and more specifically, the different sizes of the different products. And so what I mean by that, is if you go on the undefeated site, if you were to select a specific size, so size 8.5, as you can see, this size 8.5 has a variant over here. Now, since there are all the other sizes are out of stock at the moment, but you know, if assuming they weren't, if you were to go on size 8, then uh, size 8 would actually have a different variant. So the variant is way more specific than an actual product ID. A variant will help you identify what the product is, but also what the size of the product is on the site. So when you take the variant and you paste it over here, you will realize when you try to click on the size box that you won't be able to actually insert any size. And that's because the bot automatically understands as soon as you're using a variant, that the variant already contains the size within the code over here. So they won't let you pick a size as well on top of that. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, but to go back to the example, we might as well just use a keyword for now. And I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna use just a random. All right. So the next step that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna select the size. So the sizing for Shopify tasks is actually quite flexible. You are allowed to either pick a specific size, so that could be size 12, for example, or you could go ahead and uh, pick, you know, a range of sizes. So it could be size 12, size 12.5, and size 13. And uh, you can even uh, select the si you can even select random sizing as well. So just type random and then it will pick a random uh, size for the product on the site. Now, something that I didn't touch on when I went to keywords was, you know, here we have the positive keywords, but you also do have what we call a negative keyword. And so negative keywords are pretty much, you know, keywords that you kind of tell the bot or the task more specifically, you know, to not go for any item that includes these keywords. You know, so that, and that especially like applies if you were to pick very loose keywords. So, for example, if you were to go for Yeezy 350, then you know there may be certain Yeezy 350 models that you wouldn't want to go after. So, you know, maybe you didn't want to go after the black Yeezy model. Uh, let's say you didn't want to go after the black or the white Yeezy models, and th so then you would separate it by a comma which would basically be telling the bot that you don't want to go after the black or the white model. And uh, the, the whole comma idea also works on the, po on the positive uh, keyword side as well. So for example, you know, maybe you want to go for both Yeezy 350 models and Yeezy 700 models, right? Then you would put it like this and then the bot would understand that as soon as a product on the site releases with the keyword Yeezy 350 or the keyword Yeezy 700, it will go after that product. 
but you want to be very careful. You know, often times, you know, we do not recommend you using a keyword as loose as DZ350. There are so many models out there, some of them that may not have any resale value on them. So you don't want to just grab any Yeezy 350 that may restock, you know, so that's why you kind of want to usually be specific. Now, another example where you could use, uh, uh, you know, negative keywords is also be, for example, sometimes uh, there, are, there are sneakers that release with uh, different family sizing. So, you know, you have adult sizing, but you would also have grade school sizing. So you could just could put something like grade. Uh, you could put something like GS as well. And that will pretty much eliminate you getting any of these grade uh, school products. And of course, you know, we usually just have both this recommended positive and uh, negative keywords in our release guides. So, you know, if you're ever confused about that, you could just pretty much go ahead, go to the release guide, copy paste it as it is over there and just, you know, you move on from there. Uh, so the next thing we're going to go over is the min and the max price. Often times I, I, I usually recommend people to just kind of like, you could leave this empty. Uh, if you already have very specific keywords, no need to kind of like go around this, especially that sometimes the whole min max price range does uh, lead to some issues. So I would suggest you leave it empty, um, you know, especially if you have very specific keywords or already an early link or variant. Uh, for the shipping rate, you know, this has already been discussed in a different video that we have already posted on our YouTube channel. So you could just go ahead and check that out. Uh, for billing profile, I'm just going to go ahead and click my test. And then for that task delay, uh, task, uh, task editing is allowed on uh, Shopify tasks on AI robot. So you can go ahead and change that. Uh, we on our discord, uh, Shopify setup tips channel, we do have the different recommended, uh, delay ranges that you could try to experiment with on Shopify. We don't have an exact delay that we suggest, but we do offer like different ranges that we suggest you try out. Uh, we could just go ahead and pick something like 4,000, for example. And then just kind of pick the number of tasks that you want to go for, uh, two tasks, for example. Uh, also, there was this one point that I didn't discuss, actually, which is actually quite of an important point. And it is the different task mode. So as you can see here, we do have the boost, the fast and the normal mode. Uh, so the boost mode is usually the mode that you will want to use when a Shopify site has bot protection or Shopify anti-bot is on that site. So, uh, you know, and we usually specify what sites actually have the bot protection on in the release guides as well. So uh, if there is bot protection and, you know, you, for example, decided to use fast or normal mode, you are going to encounter problems during the drop. So boost mode is going to be the only mode that you're going to have to use. Uh, now, if there is no bot protection uh, or if there is no like just anti bot on the on the particular Shopify site, then you can go ahead and pick between fast and normal mode. Uh, we also mention whenever you have to use fast mode and sometimes we'll ask you to use a, a mix of fast and normal. Now, uh, you know, obviously from the name, you can tell that fast mode is actually faster than uh, normal mode tasks. However, you know, sometimes you do need a considerably lower speed on certain sites. So that's why we would also you you may also see us recommend you uh, running normal uh, speed uh, tasks as well. You know, so once you're done with that, that that should pretty much be it from the task uh, standpoint regarding editing like mass editing and you know mass select task edit and even like starting select tasks stopping and deleting select tasks all of these have already been explained in different videos such as like the foot site setup to tasks uh video so you know there's no need to go over them again uh one thing that you may uh, be interested in would be this so if there was you know an early link for a particular product right so let's just say, you know, like on uh, early link. Okay, let's just assume this is the early link. Then you, once you actually get the early link, which would be posted in a Discord, for example, or maybe your cook group shared it with you, then you could right click. And now you just had keywords over here, but once you click save, now it will include the early link.
And the reason you may want to use an early link over a keyword is an early link is way quicker than a keyword. And also a variant is actually much quicker than the early link as well. So, you know, so if you do have a variant, it's highly preferable that you actually, you know, actually run tasks with that variant. And if you don't have a variant, then an early link would be a good alternative. And then if you don't have either, then a keyword is usually what you can settle for. Uh, I also highly suggest you kind of have a mix of keywords and either variant or early links because sometimes the early links and the variants may change, but the keywords for the most part, you know, they, they kind of are the same for all the different sites. You could also decide to mass edit the link and so it would change the uh, link for all the tasks that you have. That is also another feature that you could take advantage of. And, uh, you know, we also didn't go over the Shopify password here. So the Shopify password, you're almost never going to use this. Most sites that have a password page on uh, and a password page is just pretty much, you know, uh, this kind of like page that a, set w that a site will have up before a release, which pretty much, uh, you know, kind of does not allow anybody to go into the site until the release uh, actually happens. And so for the most part, sites automatically remove the Shopify password page, you know, once that release actually happens. However, there are very few cases where there are certain sites uh, that may not remove it automatically and would require you to manually input the Shopify password. Uh, however, you know, we don't really cover much of these sites to begin with, but that's kind of like where you would, you have the ability to put the password just in case, you know, the site that you're going after does require you to manually input it. Now we also do have the Shopify monitor, uh, but that was already also explained in a different video. So I highly suggest you uh, take a look at that video. It will help you get an idea of how to take advantage of the Shopify monitor as well as quick tasks. And then finally we reached the part for the CAPTCHA. So the, sh the system that uh, the Shopify or the CAPTCHA system that Shopify uses is the V2 CAPTCHA. So the V2 CAPTCHA is a CAPTCHA that most of you may already be familiar with. It's pretty much you tick a box and a puzzle will pop up for you to kind of solve. I have gone more into details regarding that in a separate uh, explainer video for CAPTCHAs. Uh, but just for now, just to show you how to set up for Shopify and specifically, uh, you can go ahead to as a guest login and you can go for Shopify and now you have the Shopify solver here of course you want to make sure that you log into YouTube first you also do have the option to click on add new and sign in with your captcha and while you with using a captcha proxy then just use your email and your password here these are the login details for your Google account uh, and when, you know, once you're done with that, you could also sign in onto YouTube and it will act the exact same way as the guest login. Except with the add new, you have the ability to add proxies as well. Once you're on here, we said we click on the Shopify logo and you'll have this. And so when you, when you actually start your tasks, all right, and usually you will start your tasks before the release happens and we oftentimes specify in the guides when to actually start your tasks. Uh, so when you once you actually start the task, you're going to have to wait a bit. Sometimes it's going to be two or three minutes before the actual release happens. And then once the release happens, you will realize that there's going to be captures for you to solve. So if you have a bunch of tasks, you're going to have to solve a bunch of captures as well, which is why it's recommended to have a bunch of capture solvers open at the same time. Often like three or four for Shopify would be a good amount. And just kind of like a small note as well for each capture solver, you want to make sure that you have a different Gmail account logged into it. But for the most part, that is what you need to know about setting up uh, Shopify tasks. It is slightly different than setting up for other sites just because you do have to follow two or three extra step steps. But uh, for the most part, it isn't really that complicated. And you know, I really hope that you found this video useful and on to the next one.